We're standing on the podium deck roof at the city of Toronto, a roof that it soon will have one of the most beautiful green roofs in North America when it's uh, completed in October of next year. Like many cities, large areas of land are covered with roofscapes. And these areas provide very little by, in terms of benefits for the people that live either in the buildings or the cities. They're very desolate and barren, almost like urban deserts. They're also dark, and dark surfaces like this tend to heat up the city, causing us to use more energy for our air conditioning, generating more air, uh, air pollutants by burning coal and other fossil fuels to generate electricity. In contrast, extensive green roofs are lightweight systems, and these lightweight systems can be applied to almost any rooftop that has appropriate structural loading capacity and the ability to hold a roof too great of a slope and we can't put a green roof on. These are extensive green roofs over here in a pilot project we completed in the year 2000 in partnership with the City of Toronto, Environment Canada and the Canadian Federal Government. Another challenge that we face with all these roof areas and paved areas in our cities has to do with stormwater management. The rain hits these areas and it runs down in drains and often in older cities it combines with sanitary sewage creating something called a combined sewer overflow which is essentially diluted sewage going into rivers and streams and lakes, estuaries, all these areas that we really don't want um, sewage going into because of the damaging effects it has on human health and ecosystem health and enjoyment. So with the green roof technology, what we'll do is we'll capture a lot of that water and hold it on the roof. And through the process of evaporation and transpiration, we will bring that water back into the surrounding atmosphere, thereby cooling off the building and also managing stormwater simultaneously. Behind me is Nathan Phillips Square in Toronto, Canada. And while it looks like it's not a rooftop, that giant square down there is in fact a rooftop above a five-story parking garage. So the green roof behind me has trees and shrubs and a variety of planting, which is characteristic of intensive green roofs. Green roofs with intense vegetation, often accessible, um, requiring much more structural loading capacity to support the weight. That's one of the types of green roofs we see often in condominium buildings and in public places. Extensive green roofs are types of systems that are characterized by their very lightweight, low plant diversity, low structural loading capacity. We use six inches or less of uh, growing medium on an extensive green roof. And very rarely do you ever see trees or shrubs because there isn't enough, enough depth of growing medium to support those plants. Many of the green roofs that we're implementing in North America right now are extensive in their neighbor and their nature and have a variety of sedums which are very hardy drought tolerant plants that can take the harsh conditions of light and dryness that exist and wind exposure that exists on top of a rooftop. Um, so that's what intensive extensive green roofs are uh, are generally all about. Green roofs are comprised of a number of different layers, all of which have different and related functions that have to work in concert with each other for a green roof to work properly. As you can see from this diagram down here, what we're essentially doing is we're placing a green roof either uh, above the, the insulation, the vapor control, and the structural support. So the green roof element starts with a very high quality waterproofing system. The waterproofing is really important, both the design and installation with quality control to ensure good water waterproofing. Then we have a, a root repellent layer, so unwanted plants could never puncture through that uh, waterproofing system and cause damage. Above that, we have a drainage layer, and the drainage layer facilitates runoff during heavy storms and ensures that water doesn't collect on the roof and drown the plants inadvertently. And then above that, we have a filter uh, cloth or filter membrane that keeps fine particulate matter from clogging the drainage layer and then above that we have the growing medium and we don't put soil on green roofs or dirt we put lightweight growing medium which is a blend of various materials this is a volcanic rock it's lightweight and porous aggregate material that's used in many mixes so it's this lightweight um, strong material mixed with organic matter often compost 
that comprises the um, growing medium and it comes in different formulations for different types of plants and different applications. And then beyond that we have the plants which uh, range from large trees as in, as in the intensive green roof to small um, sedums, ground, uh, horizontal, horizontally growing sedums. So there's a huge diversity of opportunity with green roofs. In 2008, we're introducing uh, our first Green Roof Professional designation for horticulturalists and landscape architects and architects and engineers and any building professional that's interested in getting into the Green Roof business will be able to write an exam and become a Green Roof Professional if they're able to pass the exam. And that's something that you should look forward to uh, identifying those individuals if you're a, a client and you want to do a Green Roof in the future because they'll have um, expertise uh, and knowledge associated with the appropriate design of these systems. One of the interesting benefits of green roofs that we've only really just begun to scratch the surface of is their ability to produce food. Um, this is a um, spearmint plant that we planted some time ago on this rooftop. Um, there are examples of uh, tomatoes and eggplant and cabbages and corn and a whole variety of plants being grown um, on the roofs of buildings. What's really cool about that is not only that you get the potential produce from the, the plants, but you get an opportunity for social interaction, a, a recreational opportunities, uh, and a whole bunch of additional um, environmental benefits associated with growing food locally uh, so that we don't have to transport it long distances. And I think we're really at the edge of a whole transformation in how we farm and I think you're going to see much more urban agricultural applications not only on rooftops but with green walls and many other types of technologies uh, really taking off in the near future as the cost of fossil fuel continues to rise and people become increasingly concerned about the quality and health of their food. This tree is an example of what can happen if a green roof isn't properly maintained. This is an extensive plot with six inches or less of growing medium. It is not designed for trees, although it is possible for tree seeds if they're not seedlings, if they're not properly removed through a, a proper maintenance regime to grow like this. Um, so you have to be very careful to do proper maintenance, have a five-year maintenance contract on a green roof. And also you have to make sure that you have a root repellent layer as part of the assembly so that if something like this does take place and it's not taken care of right away, that there's no way that the roots of this tree will damage the waterproofing uh, in any way, shape or form. Green roofs provide unparalleled benefits in terms of a building technology. They manage storm water, they're beautiful, they create opportunities for food production and biodiversity. They cool the city down, they filter the air as the wind blows through them. They're beautiful and there is a huge opportunity in our cities to make them much healthier and more sustainable places with green roofs. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you want more information check out Green Roofs for Healthy Cities. We're at www.greenroofs.org. Cheers.